Now what happened is he continued to claim that he's the Imam. And he was collecting, you know, the, the khums and zakat money on behalf of, of the Imam of the Shia because he claimed that I am the Imam. One day a delegation comes from Qum. Qum at the time was a city or a big village that was populated mainly by the followers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And they had great top scholars from Al Ash'ari family and other families. So they sent a delegation, go to Samarra and give our money to the next Imam. There must be a next Imam after Al Askari. Give that money to him. So when they re arrived Samarra, it was confirmed to them that Al Imam Al Askari has been martyred. So they were looking for the next Imam. One of the friends of Ja'far, the uncle of Al Imam Al Mahdi, came to them and told them, I'll take you to the Imam of your time. So he took them to Ja'far. Ja'far said, Who are you? They told him, We're a delegation from Qom. We used to bring money to your brother, Al Askari, and now we've brought money. By the way, when they were looking for Ja'far, they were told that he's by the banks of the river dancing and playing. When they heard that, they were kind of confused. The first time, you know, somebody who claims to be an Imam is dancing and playing. That never happened with the Ahl al -Bayt. So they kind of had doubts about this guy. But they're like, we don't know. Maybe there were special circumstances. Let's just go and figure this out. So they tell him we're a delegation from Qom. We used to bring money and amanat to your brother Al Askari. And now, we've, the minute he heard the word money, he's like, give it to me. I want the money. I'm the Imam of your time. They told him, okay, but show us proof and evidence. He's like, what kind of evidence do you want me to show? They told him, when we would bring the money to your brother Al Askari, he would tell us exactly what we had in our belongings and how much money we had. The exact amount, let's say 5,000 dinars and 50 dirhams. He would tell us the exact amount. Okay, tell us, how much money do we have? He told them, this is blasphemy. I don't have ilm al ghaib the knowledge of the unseen. Only God has ilm al ghaib They told him, sorry, you have to prove it to us. We're not going to give you the money. We have come on behalf of the city of Qom. We're entrusted, it's not our money. They told us to give us the imam who can prove through a miracle that he's the imam. Al Askari used to do that every time we would come. So do it if you're really the Imam. He got frustrated, he went to the Caliph. He went to the Khalifa, the Abbasid Khalifa. He told them, look at these crazy people. They expect me to have this Ilm al ghaib I don't have this Ilm al ghaib And neither did my brother Hassan al-Askari had this Ilm al ghaib So the Khalifa summons them. He tells them, give them the money. Give him the money. He's your Imam. They say, no, we don't recognize him as our Imam. If he is, let him tell us. We have a tradition in which Imam al-Askari used to tell us. And this is not our money. It's not, if it was our money, we'd give it. It's not our money. We're entrusted, so we can't. In that case, the Khalifa told Ja'far, I can't do anything. They have a point over here. So they tell the Khalifa, let us just go back. We won't give our money to anyone. Let us go back safely to Qum. We'll return the money to its people. He said, okay, go back safely. On their way back, as soon as they leave the castle of the Caliph and they're on their way back to Qum, a young boy comes to them. He tells them, your master is waiting for you in this location. And he mentions all of them by name. They tell him, you, you are the Imam. He says, no, I am the slave of your Imam. The Imam is waiting for you. The Imam of your time is waiting for you. He takes them to a place where Imam al-Mahdi was in, a secret place because he was away from the eyes of the government. Once they meet Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, before they ask him about the sign to demonstrate that he's the Imam, he tells them, you aren't so and so, you came from Qom, you're carrying that much money in your sack, and you're carrying that much money, and you're carrying that much money. They said, when we heard that from him, we fell into sujood. And we thanked Allah that he did not leave us on this earth without our Imam. And that this is the true Imam. Then Al Imam Al Mahdi told them, Look, this is the last time you come to Samarra. The situation here is so unstable you can't come anymore. From now on, I have representatives in Baghdad. Next time, bring the money to Baghdad and give it to my representatives. Because if you keep coming here to Samarra, the Khalifa will notice there's activity here. It's going to be bad for you. You'll be captured and imprisoned and killed. Don't come to Samarra anymore. Next time you go to Baghdad, 
And that's exactly what happened. So now, this marks al ghaybat al sughra that lasted from the year 260 when Imam al Mahdi officially became the Imam till the year 329. How many years is that? 260 to 300, that's 40. Plus 29, that's how much? 69 years. It lasted for about, let's say, 70 years. So Al Ghayba to Sughra lasted for 70 years. During this Ghayba, the Imam السلام, appointed four ambassadors who officially represented him. So that anyone who had a question to ask the Imam السلام, if they were going through any trouble, social crisis, political crisis, problems, they would go to these four ambassadors. He had appointed them clearly. And in order to prove that they were the ambassadors of the Imam, they could actually perform miracles. People would ask them, Who, what's the proof that you're in communication with the Mahdi? Because there were imposters, like ash Maghani who claimed that he was also representing the Mahdi. There were some others who did that. So they would actually demonstrate by miracles that they were the representatives of the Imam, so that those true Shia would know they are the Sufar 